Hi, I'm Larry Ladowski with Midwest Outdoors. Today I'm up on Devil Lake, North Dakota, one of the hottest walleye fisheries in the country, especially the last few years. We got heat, humidity, low lake water, and a bug hatch. What else could go wrong, right? But I've got a secret weapon. I've got professional walleye fisherman Zach Axman on the boat. We're going to see how we can catch some walleye. We're going to teach you how to do it and have some fun. Nice. Yeah, he's a tugger now. You know, folks, I was saying this is my first time on Double Lake. And what a cool story and what a cool lake. Nice! Nice nut job, sir. Thank you. And that looks like a decent eater size, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a, that's the size of the eaters Devil's Lake is known for right there. You're 16 to 18 inches. You know, you can't get a better better fish for the frying pan than that. That feels a little better. So folks, we got a pattern going. My captain's finding the fish and dialing them in. We've got a baby white bass bite going on. And nice, oh, look at that. Lure just came out of his mouth. And we're starting to put fish in the boat. I kind of like it. <laughs> this guy's got a different color to him. Yeah. He's more of a white fish. The so, other one was golden. So one thing with fish like this, this tell, a white fish tells me they're, they're moving. If, like, if you look at a walleye that's golden, most of the time they're a resident fish, meaning they're not traveling. But if they're migrating long ways and stuff like that, they'll actually get white from really? stress. Cool. So, yeah. That's awesome to know. Yeah. Yep, there's one. What we're doing is we're using 10 pound fire line, and then we're just attaching a snap with a flicker shatter, flicker minnow. We're actually using eight six telescoping rods. And one little trick I like to do to kind of get a spread out is on my back two rods, you can see I will run the telescoping rod actually inside. It doesn't change the action of the, of the rod or anything like that, but what it does is it changes it down to about a 6-6 six, six rod. So you get a different spread. Now, if you get a big fish on, all you got to do is just extend it out. You fight the fish at the full length. There's one right there. <laughs> Yep. That one's small fit. Just to get it out of the way so that we can land this fish. It's really nice and easy when you can move your rods when you're trolling back and forth so that you know you got your rod holders in a position where you they can be out of the way when you're fighting the fish. It's perfect when you can just bring them right in the back here. These fish must be moving because this is another one. <laughs> right, they're they're definitely moving. They're not not holding out. A good little eater. Yep. So if you're thinking about coming up to Devil's Lake on a, you know, a family trip or just a guy's weekend out uh, fishing trip, one thing to do is don't get overwhelmed with the sheer size of Devil's Lake. You know, you can break it down into into separate sections. You have Pelican Lake. You have the flats, you have Main Lake, then you have Creole Bay, you have Six Mile Bay, and you have East Bay and East Devil's Lake. Take the time and fish one section for two or three days. Don't go jumping around all over the place because what's gonna happen is you're gonna start chasing stuff. Where if I spend three days in Six Mile Bay, I'm gonna learn every day to make myself more successful on maybe that fourth day. Is it, is it better to not reel or when they start jumping and stuff like that? You know, I like to keep them underneath, but if they if they start coming up and they want to stay on the surface, 
then I'll keep them on the surface. Just want to keep tension on them the whole way to the boat. Because that's what's really important about a rod, right? With a particular rod that you're using, a longer rod gives you more flexibility right. for that, to absorb some of those rods. Right. So, like when you're trolling or using, we're using fire line today. So, you want a flimsier rod because with no stretch in the fire line, the rod does all the work. Where if you have mono, mono will actually stretch. So therefore, it's going to keep it in the fish's mouth. So we subtract the f the stretch of the mono with the fire line. We increase it with the rods. Another one for the line. Yeah. Well, for my first time on Devil's Lake, it did not disappoint. And I want to thank Zach Axman here for helping me and putting me in his boat and showing me the lake. If you want more information on Devil's Lake, you can go to ndtourism.com. Midwest Outdoors, we'll be right back, and I'll catch you later.